We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. John F. Kennedy, icon, war hero, the voice of a generation, a president gone too soon. But how did a sickly boy from Massachusetts become the most powerful man in the world? This is how Kennedy won. Before we keep going, I wanna take a minute to ask you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because I'm working really hard and I really hope you guys enjoy the content. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who regularly went by Jack, was born in Brookline, Massachusetts in 1917 to a very wealthy Irish American family. His father, Joseph P. Kennedy, was a businessman and politician with considerable influence. JFK's mother, Rose, was also part of a political dynasty as her father had been governor of Massachusetts. With this sort of heritage, the Kennedy children were set up for political greatness whether they liked it or not. Despite his wealth, Joe Kennedy's family had originally started out as very poor Irish immigrants who faced discrimination in the United States. The elder Kennedy wanted nothing more than for his firstborn son to become the first Irish American president of the United States. The thing is, John F. Kennedy wasn't his firstborn son, Joe Kennedy Jr. was. Groomed to be president from a very young age, Joe Kennedy Jr. was the all-American man. He was smart, handsome, athletic, and even went on to fight in World War II. Sadly, he passed away at the young age of just 29, working as a pilot on a secret mission. If Joe Jr. hadn't tragically passed away, it's really possible that we would be talking about him today instead. With his oldest son gone, Joe Kennedy Sr. looked to his second son, Jack. But JFK was far from being his perfect older brother. Although he's remembered today as a young president full of energy and vitality, JFK was actually a very sick man. As a child, he had nearly died from scarlet fever, suffered from spine and back problems, severe stomach problems, and one of his legs was almost an inch shorter than the other. This led to Jack being a far more introverted child who loved to read. Before his brother's passing, JFK didn't dream about being president, he dreamed about being an author or a journalist. Even before his brother passed, JFK had joined the war effort as the commander of a torpedo boat named PT-109. On August 2nd, 1942, a large Japanese force would sink PT-109 with JFK on board. Despite his numerous health problems, JFK was able to carry an injured crewman three and a half miles to another island. Afterward, Kennedy swam another two miles in the middle of the night trying to get the attention of another boat. On August 4th, Kennedy carried the same injured crewman another three and a half miles to an island with more resources. Then on August 5th, they made an hour long swim to another island where they found food and a canoe. Needless to say, after all of that, JFK was seen as a hero by the general public. It's widely believed that Joe Kennedy Jr. felt upstaged by his younger brother, which may have led to him taking on such a dangerous mission that would ultimately kill him. Regardless of whether or not that's true, JFK certainly did blame himself for his older brother's passing. Like I said earlier, Joe Kennedy Sr. was a really influential politician, serving as ambassador to England during Adolf Hitler's rise in Germany. Joe Sr. was also a close ally of Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. Since he took office, Mr. Chamberlain has never wavered in his determination to establish peace in Europe. Together, the two men supported the policy of appeasement, which meant giving Hitler some of what he wanted in an attempt to keep him from expanding even more. But if you know anything about Hitler, you know that appeasement was a colossal failure. <laughs> In 1938, Chamberlain and Hitler had made a deal called the Munich Agreement, where Hitler would get part of Czechoslovakia and leave the rest of it alone. The following year, Hitler would just take the rest of Czechoslovakia anyway. We know now what Nazi promises are worth. Chamberlain was seen as a failure, and Joe Kennedy's close association to him and the failed appeasement policy would ultimately kill his political career. Now, Joe Sr.'s presidential ambitions for his son were all he had left. JFK was a famous war hero, but he was also the son of a man who had enabled the rise of Adolf Hitler. So now JFK needed to distance himself from his father. JFK finally got to achieve his dream of becoming an author when he wrote the book Why England Slept, which strongly criticized appeasement and set Kennedy apart from his dad. Behind the scenes, of course, Joe Kennedy was still involved with his son's career, pulling the strings and providing the cash. And the next step for JFK was political office. 
JFK was elected to the House of Representatives in 1946, along with other World War II veterans such as Richard Nixon, who we're going to talk about later. If you know me, you know I love talking about Nixon. <laughs> While he only represented a small district, JFK would fly back to Massachusetts every week and give speeches all over the state. The House was never going to be enough for him, so after only six years in Congress, Kennedy decided to run for Senate in 1952. Despite Republican President Dwight D. Eisenhower winning Massachusetts by 208,000 votes, Kennedy, who was a Democrat, was able to beat the incumbent Republican senator by 70,000 votes. Despite being an American, Kennedy had spent a lot of time in England as a child, growing up around lots of members of the British aristocracy. This gave Kennedy a sense of status and class that other American politicians just didn't have. The year after being elected to the Senate, Kennedy married Jacqueline Bouvier, an American socialite who was well regarded for her intelligence and beauty. Jackie had a lot of the same high-class sensibilities as her husband, and together they began to embody the image of the ideal post-war American couple that was manifesting in the United States. Even the U.S. Senate wasn't enough for the young Kennedy, who after only eight years at his current job decided to seek the presidency. 1960 was a year for change. The people loved Eisenhower, but he was old. The oldest president at that point, and people wanted something new. A man who's old enough to know And young enough to do the 1960 election saw two very similar, but also very different men face off against each other. While both these men would become president in their lifetimes, only one of them would become president in 1960. Richard Nixon was only four years older than JFK. Like Kennedy, he had served in World War II, attended a prestigious university, and as previously mentioned, the two had been elected to the House of Representatives in the same year. Like JFK, Nixon had also been elected to the Senate, but the two men's careers diverged when Eisenhower chose the young Nixon as his VP. After eight successful years as the number two in the White House, Nixon felt like it was his turn to be president. Vote for Nixon and Lodge, November 8th. They understand what peace demands. Although they had very similar careers, Nixon and Kennedy's childhoods couldn't be any more different. While Kennedy had a privileged, almost royal upbringing, Nixon was born into a dirt poor Quaker family in Southern California. Nixon was a gifted student and football player who was offered a full scholarship to Kennedy's alma mater, Harvard University. But Nixon had to decline in order to stay home and help his family run their grocery store. Nixon's early poverty led him to develop a bigotry towards liberals, elites, and Catholics, who he saw as privileged, three labels that applied to JFK. So in the 1960 election, Nixon is running against a man of similar credentials, but whom he saw as inferior because he hadn't earned his position the same way that Nixon had. Nixon made Kennedy's Catholicism a central issue of the campaign, so much so that Kennedy even had to make a statement addressing it. I am not the Catholic candidate for president. I am the Democratic Party candidate for president who also happens to be a Catholic. I do not speak for my church on public matters and the church does not speak for me. I apologize, but I really like doing the JFK voice. <laughs> okay, here we go. The most famous thing about the 1960 election, the thing that people always talk about, the first televised presidential debate. 1960 was the first time that the American people got to watch two presidential candidates debate each other from the comfort of their own living room. The story goes that Nixon was a real man's man and he refused to put on any makeup. Because of this, the harsh studio lights made him look pale and sickly compared to Kennedy, who accepted the makeup. JFK was the clear winner of the debate, which proved to be a turning point in his campaign. In one of the closest elections in American history, Kennedy would beat Nixon by only 0.17% of the popular vote, beginning a new era of American politics. There is speculation that Joe Kennedy influenced Chicago's political machine to stuff ballots for JFK, thus giving him the state of Illinois, which he only won by 9,000 votes. There's also speculation that Kennedy's running mate Lyndon Johnson rigged the election for him in Texas, but that seems a lot less likely. If Nixon had won both Texas and Illinois, he would have won the election, and history would have been very different. There's no telling how a hot-headed Richard Nixon would have handled a situation as delicate as the Cuban Missile Crisis, for example. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was sworn in as the 35th President of the United States on January 20th, 1961, the youngest president ever elected at just 43 years old. The administration of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy begins. 
The picturesque Kennedy family moved into the White House and were deemed Camelot to represent the vitality of the Kennedy administration. Kennedy, of course, was a very flawed man, with his infidelity to his wife Jackie being widely reported on in recent years. John F. Kennedy is seen today as a figure of hope and American excellence. To some, he even represents a better time. But the thing about the Kennedy years is, despite Camelot, despite the handsome, intelligent young war hero who would become president, the Kennedy years weren't really that great. African Americans were still fighting for their civil rights and being denied equality at every turn. Women were still fighting for equal job opportunities. The Cold War ramped up to its peak and the entire world was almost subject to a nuclear holocaust. Try to remember what to do if the atom bomb explodes right then. It's a bomb, duck and cover. JFK would only serve two years and 10 months in office before being tragically killed on November 22, 1963 in Dallas, Texas. A lot of historians ponder whether or not Kennedy would be well known today if he hadn't been assassinated. Does a premature, dramatic assassination that was caught on video outweigh an entire life? From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Talk to someone who isn't that interested in history and ask them what they know about Kennedy. They might not know anything about what he did or what he believed, but they will know that he got shot. This video has been How Kennedy Won, but now at the end of the video, I want to ask, yeah, Kennedy won, but at what cost? Joe Kennedy Sr. swore that his son would become the Commander-in-Chief. You could argue that pursuing the presidency is what made Joe Jr. take the risk that would ultimately kill him. Assuming his older brother's destiny of becoming president ultimately killed JFK as well. Even after Jack was killed, his younger brother Bobby ran for president, only to be assassinated, too. The fourth and youngest Kennedy brother would run for president as well, but he never made it past a primary. Joe Kennedy Sr. wanted to be president so bad that he lost three of his sons trying to do so, and lived to go to all three of their funerals. This has been How Kennedy Won. I want to ask, what are your thoughts on JFK, and what are some other tragic figures in American history that you would like to see covered as well? Let me know in the comments below, and please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I've been working really hard, like I said, and I'm really excited to push out more content for you guys. Thanks for watching.